Good afternoon, and welcome to another beguiling version of Diatribes from the Voice of Doom. Now here's your befuddled and bewildered host, Voice of Doom! <laughs> Hello. Okay, I haven't done a diatribe in a while, so I figured I'd throw in my two cents on some of the crap that's gone on. I've been some news today. And some news in the last few days. It's September 6th. Liberty has passed. Um, I'll give you a little stuff on the microcosm, which isn't much called the uh, investigators and still no news on Max so that's taking its bloody sweet time and my theory is that they can't find a an obvious reason that Max was found on the trail deceased um, no outward injury and I don't know anything about the blood tests yet but I think they would have known by now if it was a drug overdose which he did not do things like that so it just might be mishap and he may never have a real answer I've talked to a few of his so-called friends and they can't help me so that's where that is and I've been trying to get things done because I find that being alone and knowing that no one's going to come around is getting lonely um, and I'm bored and I don't do anything so I decided I'd get my health taken care of a little bit I mean yeah I'm depressed and bored so get healthier so I stopped smoking Swishers about two months ago. Um, went to the doctor, got a blood workup. They found out that I got nothing. So I'm pretty much normal health wise. And I, you know, this and that. Gave me some antibiotics for my skin thing I got going on. And that's always nice that I can actually treat myself. I don't have to pay because I'm paying out of my social security for all this so I don't have to give them any you know bounce a check and so that's good I feel good about you know looking at my health um, just so that I don't get any surprises I don't really fear death. I mean, I've had to deal with it the past few years, and it makes me think a lot more about, you know, what happens and how will it be, and I hate that. I don't like uncertainty. That's why I think that uh, suicide should be an option for people who just can't handle not being in control. And uh, that's kind of me. I just don't like the, uh, you know, I could get hit by a truck. I could get in a car accident. I could get caught in a uh, drive-by shooting or, a, you know. But I'll just leave it there. It's kind of boring. I don't want to bore you with this. Let's get on to the news. Um, shootings. Okay, I've been looking at YouTube. Let's see, that's all I look at. I've been trying to read more get away from watching nothing but news and you know and other things sitcoms but I'm watching YouTube and uh, my news feed is just plastered with this whole business about this school shooting four people killed now there was a mass shooting three days earlier in a subway and I didn't get anywhere near the same amount of uh, publicity that this school shooting got 
And now this morning we find that the father of the perpetrator murderer has been arrested and charged really, really bad with some bad stuff. So they're saying he was negligent and the whole story is the family was negligent and they abused the kids and the kid turns out to be a school shooter. And they always talk about intervention. They always talk about if we could catch things ahead of time then we wouldn't have this so much. It has nothing to do with guns. It has to do with, you know, finding out if there's people at risk. Well, they found out there was a person at risk. They dealt with it as best they could and the guy still went out and shot somebody. Because the father shot four people. Shot, actually, you know, 15 people. Whatever. There's like eight or nine injured. So he shot a bunch of people. And it was the parents' fault because he was raised in an abusive environment and nobody did anything about it. And when they tried to do something about it, they obviously didn't follow up very much. But what I noticed is that there was, it's just, that's all they've been talking about on the news and YouTube for like three days now. And whenever they do that, I know that something else is going on somewhere else so they're you know keeping people focused on this shooting just to take our mind away from perhaps Ukraine perhaps Russia perhaps the Middle East perhaps the China Sea or perhaps Africa for all we know who knows what else is going on but uh, it seems like it's a distraction it's too much and another thing that YouTube is doing that's annoying me is every time I go to a channel and watch it, it's on it's set on auto play, so it just goes on to the next one that they think I'll like. But no matter what I play, the next one's gonna be Orangey giving a speech. So I get him every other video if I'm not paying attention because I click one and then after it's over I get orangey to the point where I'm sick of listening to orangey and I think that might be part of their plot as they want to saturate YouTube with orangey so that people get sick of him and hope that he can offend everybody at one point or another because you know he speaks kind of off the cuff and straight so he's gonna offend somebody all the time and they're hoping for that. That's why they want an open mic at this so-called debate when the gargoyle um, takes on orangey in a debate. And they made all kinds of rules for Petri dish and Petri dish dropped out. Now they want to change the rules or ignore the rules. And they both say the other side is afraid to debate. And... Uh, I don't think Orangey is afraid to debate. I think he'll talk anytime, anywhere, with anyone. As long as he can say, Sir, we have a problem, sir. You can't do that, sir. He likes talking about himself and everybody saying, Sir. Everyone's subservient to him. Everyone's obsequious and kowtowing to him. Like he's somebody special and he should always be called sir. So his narcissism is getting on my nerves. I'm still going to vote for him, but it's annoying. And I know what they're trying to do. They're trying to get on everybody's nerves with playing him 24-7. Now, open mic. Oh, we must have open mics. Why? You know why you want open mics, Gargoyle. Because you know that if he interrupts you, you can say, I'm, I was speaking show how powerful you are, how assertive you are. So you want him to be able to interrupt. It has nothing... What, what else could it have to do with? We need open mics at the debate. Why? Well, because it's not fair to have... If one person's speaking, their mic is open. If it's the other ter person's turn, then they open their mic. You keep both mics open just so that you can catch Orangey saying something or sighing or rolling his eyes too loudly or whatever I mean 
problem with the fact that 99% of the electorate are idiots, brain-dead morons that shouldn't be allowed to vote. The 1% that think can see right through it, can see right through what they want. And then they always have some reason that has to do with the Constitution. Democracy. You can't shut the mics down? That's, what does that have to do with democracy? Okay, so Gargoyle is going to do a debate. That should be fun to watch. And we're going to continue on through uh, September and October. And I think that we will have an election if it stays close because the Dems, D's, can always count on their cheating to put their person over the top. If Orange wins by one or two or three or five percent, they can always cheat their way to victory. We all, we, we all know that. So they're going to keep this election going as long as it looks like the gargoyle has a chance. Now, what if it goes, what if something happens? What if there's an October surprise where they oh, find out that her husband is having an affair with someone, or they find out that she did something that's really hard to get over. Uh, she railroaded a poor person of color into prison back when she was an attorney general saving California from transnational drug cartels doing a good job so something might come out and that might plummet her down to only 46 percent of the vote because there's always going to be a certain percentage of idiots there's no getting around that she's got the moron block sewn up and there's no getting around that you can't make America smarter in the next two months so as long as it stays close there might be an election now if it gets to the point where she gets down below to where she was where petri dish is at and they say there's no, there's no way you can win then we'll have the black swan conflagration pandemic infrastructure economy nuclear war one of those four things will happen before November 5th. Probably the grid will go down. Somehow somebody will, from Belarus or somewhere, will shut down the internet in America. But I noticed one thing about Orangey. He got up and did a long soliloquy on all his trials because I guess the judge Marshawn decided to postpone his sentencing till after the election which is good because that gives the other courts a chance to throw him out and send him back to his first job of being a porter at a casino and uh, so Orangey was talking and I noticed he doesn't have a pet name for gargoyle so I take gargoyle as my own patent pending boilerplate um, copyright because I don't think he wants to insult her because he's paying deference to her now he would do this to another female opponent he had Pocahontas he had Crooked Hillary had a lot of names of people but he's staying away from giving a moniker to Kamala it's just the way he says her, her name just sounds like an insult almost Kamala you have to listen to him he just stresses that it and uh, I think it's smart of him to not do that because it's childish who needs you know these these uh, sobriquets for these people from him it's kind of fun at first but it's, you know it's good to lay off there's enough fodder he calls her stupid he calls her an idiot he calls her a moron he just doesn't have a name for her so we'll call her gargoyle until the rest of the election and if we have to call her madam gargoyle the first gargoyle of the united states then those will be days that we can look forward to with dread. 
So I think I said everything I wanted to say. I know I was going to talk more about something, but uh, I'll do another one in a little while. See if there's news. Oh, one last thing. Uh, the no account son decided to plead uh, guilty to all of his tax charges because he realized he was going to lose. And he didn't want to drag his family through this humiliation any further. I have another take on that, and I'll tell you what it is in 30 seconds. The powers that be, including what used to be a shell of a person, and is now just a husk, Petri dish, said to the no-account son, I know that I told the people that I would not pardon you, but that was when I was running for president. I'm a different person now, so I can safely say I will pardon you. Just plead guilty, and you will be pardoned. Well, why should I plead guilty, Dad? Well, because you're charged with tax evasion. That's based on income. And the prosecution may want to find out where your income came from. And if they do, it'll bring down the entire U.S. government. Because we'll find out that there's corruption absolutely inculcated and ingrained and embedded throughout the entire federal system. So that's why you're going to plead guilty. And you will be pardoned. And your other alternative is, uh, well, do I have to say it? You think you're above it? No, you'll be below it. So we'll leave it there. It's all skullduggery. It's all a bunch of crap. Government should be overthrown. I've been saying this for years. So we'll see what happens. It could be exciting. Nothing is going to be dull. After the debate, we won't see Heidner hair of Gargoyle until the election when she gives her concession speech. And that will be that. We'll talk to you later. Bye.